So 2020 has been a, a bit of a crappy year all round. But one of the positive things that came out of it for me uh, was rediscovering CC Mixter. So I was aware of it when it first started some 17 years ago now. Um, but I only really got involved with it this year when lockdown came around. So one of my hobbies is, is music and I used to have a friend around the corner and he'd carry his amplifier around on a Sunday afternoon and we'd jam away for an hour or so and then he would go home. Um, but we never actually completed any songs as such. You know, neither of us could sing. When lockdown happened and he was unable to come round, um, I turned to CC Mixter as a, as a resource and all of a sudden there was you know lots and thousands of people from all around the world who've been contributing various different half-formed songs, fully formed songs, uh, just waiting for people to add backing tracks to you know their vocals and, and other bits and pieces. So um, I found I was able to uh, brush up my sort of uh, mixing skills or start to learn how to mix things and put backing tracks to uh, all of the resources that were there. And uh, that was that was very productive for me. And in some respects, it reminds me of my, my work life in a way, because um, what I've done is I've downloaded the software, sorry, the data from CC Mixter and loaded it into the software that I, I uh, was partly responsible for developing at work. So just to give a little, little backstory to that, that was a similar kind of process, which was back in 2000 as a hobby, I started tinkering with a open source search engine along with you know various other different people from around the world that was originally created by Doug Cutting here. Um, which is a fantastic piece of software and now underpins, you know, many, many different websites and products and, and so on, including the software I create at um, Elastic, along with many, many other people from around the world. So we're used to collaborating remotely via the internet. So there's lots of parallels between sort of the work and the music life here. And um, what I've chosen to do is to do a retrospective of the CC Mixter contributions using um, this software. So one of the things that we can do with the software is to look at things at a high level and then zoom into sort of lower levels and sort of drill down into detail. So at the highest level, you know, we can see that all the contributions over time, um, starting way back in 2004. And if we scroll down to uh, this listing here, we can actually have all the, the songs listed in order of um, upload. And the first upload was um, a bunch of stuff from Wired magazine, strangely enough. So this is where CC Mixter started. It was um, a bunch of content put together by Wired magazine in collaboration with Creative Commons, which was this idea that um, artists could put out content um, with this um, a, a license that allowed other people to remix it and reuse it in their own projects and attracted content from Beastie Boys and David Byrne and so on. And it appeared on a CD um, issued with Wired magazine that people could, could remix. And CC Mixter was the site where people could upload remixes of this content. So that was the original sort of creation of CC Mixter was a place to have remixes of, of this content given to Wired magazine. And there were various remix competitions and other artists contributed to stuff. And in 2009, um, it changed hands over to um, ownership of Artist Tech Media, which is a sort of community of people from the CC Mixter um, community. And uh, Madame Snowflake, um, I, I believe is behind Artist Tech Media and is also one of the, mo the more popular or the most popular uh, contributor to the site. She uh, creates some wonderful acapellas which are frequently remixed by all other members of the site. And we can see that in the, in the listing here of the, you know, the top con contributors. Um, some of the other things that we can do that are of interest is we can look at um, some of the data that's attached to each song. So each song can have tags that are describing what sort of content it is. People can describe their content using their own choice of tags and they can describe the beat, the speed, the beats per minute or BPM of the song. And what this visualization shows here is um, 
for each of several popular tags what the average BPM is. So we can see, for example, the, the tag with the highest BPM is not surprisingly DNB or drum and bass. Uh, then we start to see dance and break beats and all that kind of stuff and distortion is often associated with uh, faster songs. Uh, the stuff in the middle, like male vocals, tends to be neither um, strongly related to fast or slow music, so that's why it sort of sits somewhere in the middle of the averages here. Um, but as we get into the sort of the slower music, we start to see things like funk at 104, and as we get slower, we get into um, quieter pieces like piano and violin and cello, and finally getting down into things like ballads and stuff like that. So for any one of these things that we see in these bar charts, we can click on them and drill down. So for example, we could take the ballads and we could have a look at the, um, the BPMs associated with, associated with ballads, which tend to be sort of around you know, 60 to 80 or thereabouts, plus unusually some, some high speed ballads, which are probably interesting things to, to listen to. Um, the other strange thing um, about BPMs is that they tend to cluster around round values. So 120 is by far and away the most popular um, speed for a, an upload. Um, 100, 100 beats per minute, and then 90 beats per minute, and 140 beats per minute. So they tend to sort of cluster around these. So um, I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's just the default speed that people have when they start a new project or something, or it's just something that they're, they're familiar with. Um, that's another way we can sort of look at the, the data in summary, plus also the um, the upload lengths. So we can see that most uh, songs are roughly 200 or around 200 seconds long, you know, you sort of three minute pop songs. Um, there's quite a lot of shorter content in there as well, which tends to be sort of samples of things which people can then remix. Plus also there's some things lurking here which are you know, many thousands of seconds long. So we can sort of drill in and have a look at what sort of content is going on there. Um, so typically these are podcasts. So the tag that's been associated with things most commonly that are very long is, is podcast. And if we, if we drill down into that, uh, we can see that the first podcast was December the 1st, 2009. If we click on that, we can see a comment here from the contributor um, who said, first off, thanks to Snowflake and the crew at Artist Tech Media for bumping up the file size limit for uploads. So prior to 2009, um, you couldn't upload, or December 2009, you couldn't upload longer tracks and there was this sort of uh, limit on the uploads. But as people got interested in doing podcasts and things like that, uh, longer content was allowed. So let's clear these filters here. So one of the other things um, that the site uh, tends to do is um, because there's a lot of content and it, it can be a variable quality and all that sort of stuff is that the editors will pick tracks which they find to be um, particularly good uh, to share with the rest of the community. So we can drill down on um, the tags, or sorry, the, the uploads that have been tagged with an editorial pick and we can see again, you know, Snowflake features very heavily in as a remix um, artist, oh, sorry, an artist who is being remixed. And because of the, the, uh, vocals are very good, they're normally um, uh, very good remixes as well. So one of the top or the top remixed upload on the site um, overall time is a track called Falling. And we can look at um, how that sort of spread in the community. So what we can do is we can choose to open that up in what we call a graph visualization. Uh, and what we can see from that is this is the original um, track and stemming out from that are all the various different uh, remixes that various different people have done. And what we can also choose to do um, is to see which one of these um, actually got the editor, editor pick uh, tag associated with them and visualize that. So we can see, for example, that uh, this track here um, did get an editor's pick and we can sort of drill down and have a look at that. Um, and this is by Love Shadow, who 
does some great mixes, uh, really good sounding mixes. Um, this one's a slightly different one for him. I think it's um, more up tempo, more of a sort of a drum and bass. And we can see here that that is uh, featured in that somewhere is that, that vocal from uh, Snowflake again. So that for me was, has been sort of an interesting way of seeing how content has, has changed and, and picking out the ones that are sort of interesting remixes and, and zooming in on those. So it's just another way of looking at the data. So being the end of uh, 2020, um, one of the things I thought might be useful to do is to actually focus in on uh, the last year to some sort of retrospective of 2020. So we can zoom in on the last year and we can see top contributors being remixed uh, that year. Um, so again, Snowflake is still up there putting out content, getting remixed um, heavily. Um, and we can see the top remixed uploads here. So there's been a few here um, around various different events that we've had during the year. So when a, there was a Black Lives Matter uh, remix event. Um, so there was an upload um, here that was heavily remixed um, in conjunction with that. And Try Again, Coffee Lullabies, Love You. These are, are all contributions from, uh, let's find it here that crazy little Asian. So the significant contributors are the, are the ones that have sort of appeared in 2020 um, and been been very popular. So that crazy little Asian, I think only started, we can drill down and have a look. So only started contribution contributing um, back in, was it June or thereabouts of this year? But, uh, you know, it's very quickly um, been remixed by other communities. So she's got some great, great um, vocal tracks that have been remixed. Um, I think I've, I've done a couple of uh, her tracks myself. And, and very good they, they are too, the originals. Um, so we can also see the prolific uploaders this year. So Spec has been very busy this year. So um, over 113, 113 uploads this year. And um, we can we can drill down into those. So, if we actually have a look at um, content from a year as of today, so December twenty ninth, um, let's have a look at the first one from twenty twenty. So the first upload in twenty twenty was Spec. So he wasn't hanging around um, shortly after midnight on January the first. Um, he put out uh, this retrospective mix. So this was using samples from some of his favorite tracks from 2019. Uh, and that was just kind of retrospective shortly after uh, 2020 rolled around. Um, and as I say, you know, for me, it's been great. So Sparky is, is my account. I've managed to complete 23 songs, which is a bit of a revelation for me. Um, and it's kind of a testament to, you know, what collaborating on the internet will let you do. So work enabled me to work with people from all around the world, not just the ones who could drive into the, the local office, um, which was what I was used to doing before I started working remotely. Sort of the talent pool as it were, was just you know, the people who could afford to drive into the office every day. And uh, you know the, the talent pool when I was working from home, uh, sorry, uh, collaborating musically with others was whoever could lug an amplifier around to my house or you know, the local rehearsal room. Um, and CC Mixed has kind of just opened it up. You know, it means that I can collaborate with people all around the world, you know, um, and it, it's been a bit of a revelation. So yeah, really enjoyed it. So one thing I'd, I'd like to finish on um, to wrap up 2020 is just to highlight uh, Songboy 3. So Songboy 3 is a sort of long, long time contributor to the site. And here I'm looking at all of the songs that he's contributed, um, most of which are acapellas um, available for people to remix. And he's, you know, he's a great vocalist and you can see that from the number of remixes that have happened. Um, so all of these brown dots that are appearing here as I keep sort of hitting this plus button here to add some more content in, these are all songs that 
um, that have remixed those original a cappellas of, of uh, Songboy 3. Um, the reason for highlighting this is, unfortunately, um, Songboy 3 or Frank Carter III um, had a bit of a health issue this year. He's um, now recovering from a major surgery, having had one leg amputated below the knee. Um, and he's been unable to work and no money coming in and so on. So he's sort of virtually busking now. And if you've got some money to, uh, to spare, then I, I'd encourage you to, to contribute to um, his PayPal, Frank H. Carter 3. Or equally, if you have money to spare as well, um, supporting CC Mixer itself through Patreon. So that's it. That's the, sort of the wrap up that I have. I'd like to thank uh, CC Mixter for providing the site and the community for providing all the content. Uh, and I hope to collaborate again um, in 2021, which will hopefully be a better year for all of us.